Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as just said, thank you for joining us. Um, we'll, I, I'm going to run through, um, I, there'll be some PowerPoint slides, of course, I'm afraid, um, but uh, I'm going to run through those. I'm going to turn my camera off while we're doing it so that um, for the recording, uh, it's a bit of a cleaner screen and you don't have to look at my ugly mug uh, as we're going through this. Um, but obviously I'm here and as just said, we'll, um, we've got a little Q&A session towards the end. Um, so let me, uh, also I'm looking at a different screen, so you'll get a sideways view if I leave my camera on. So I'm going to pop my camera off um, and we'll get cracking. So yes, thank you for, for joining us. Um, and uh, just as a quick introduction, yeah, my name is Stuart McLaren. Um, I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Prospect Soft, uh, and I've been with the business um, just over 23 years. So um, right from the very beginning, basically. Um, so everybody on this webinar um, is a current Unleashed customer. And um, as you may know, um, Unleashed and Prospect Soft now are part of the Access Group, uh, you know, a global software company. Um, and so we share an awful lot of customers with Unleashed around the world. And um, we wanted to do a bit of a sort of a, um, I mean, I guess it's a launch for uh, the APAC region, although we actually already have lots and lots of customers in both Australia and New Zealand that uh, use both Unleashed and Prospect Soft. And so I thought perhaps it's worth starting, um, you know, why, why would you as an Unleashed customer be interested in looking at Prospect CRM? Um, not just because we now are part of the same company. Um, I mean, in actual fact, we've been working with Unleashed for uh, quite a few years and before we were part of the access group, before either of us were part of the access group, actually. Um, and I thought the best way perhaps to give you an example of, uh, uh, of why uh, prospect uh, CRM is so right for Unleashed customers in particular, it is perhaps just to pick up on uh, a little success story. Um, and throughout this presentation and the demonstration of the software that I'm going to give you, hopefully you'll see that our focus uh, as a CRM system is very specifically on customers like Unleashed customers uh, and being able to give you those you know, real businesses and profitable growth. Um, and a, a relatively recent customer of ours, um, um, Pure Medic Health, an Australian company, um, this was a quote that uh, Helen um, put through on one of the review sites that we were obviously delighted with. But I think it kind of sums up and hopefully, you know, some of you will feel maybe not life changing today, but uh, we'll feel that you've seen something that really could be valuable to your business. And that, that's my aim. Um, so, yeah, the day that she had to call with Prospect Sierra was amazing. I could see all of my data immediately uh, and thought this is life changing. I mean, um, I, I'm going to show you today a demonstration uh, of the software that is connected to an Unleashed system. It's a fictitious system that uh, our colleagues use in Australia called Coffee and Bean. It's a, a company that sell coffee and beans to coffee shops. It's an example company that's a fictitious company, but we've connected to that. Uh, and I'll show you all the touch points uh, between Prospect CRM and Unleashed. Um, so uh, kind of a real success story. Um, and it's not just Helen that kind of thinks that. If you go across the review sites, uh, so G2 or in the Zero App Store or Captera, um, in the Google Store or, or QuickBooks, or, or basically everywhere where you can review our kind of software, it, you'll see that we get, you know, five-star reviews. And you can see we've been awarded quite a few um, software uh, awards down the bottom by those companies, you know, best ease of use, highest user adoption, users love us, those sort of things. Um, and that's exactly what we're trying to aim for here with uh, Prospect CRM, that it's, it's, it's for a bit of a niche, um, you know, particularly Unleashed customers um, uh, are a great fit for us. And so we've put in lots of functionality that is almost quite specific uh, to your type of business. So 
we're not the only CRM out there. In fact, there are literally hundreds of them. Um, so how do we compare in the market? And I think the easiest way to, to sort of go through this is we call ourselves the stock aware CRM and have been called stock aware CRM by various other places. Uh, and it is built specifically for businesses that sell products. And, and that's quite different. I mean, I, you could pick any CRMs, but most people have heard of Salesforce, Pipedrive is quite a big one, uh, Insightly is another one. Um, you could put anybody really here in this grid. Um, the first thing to know is that we are competitive. Um, and um, uh, you know our pricing is uh, basically pretty similar. I mean, I think with Salesforce, it gets quite eye-watering quite quickly in terms of the pricing. Um, but in general, you know, the pricing is competitive. We have to be competitive, obviously. The key difference is who the customers are. And if you look at the breakdown of customers that have reviewed these other systems, the industries that they're in tend to be all service-based industries computer software, information technology, marketing, internet, financial services, and so on and so forth. The key difference is that when you look at our reviews and our customer base, we are singularly focused on product-based businesses that are selling uh, some proportion uh, business to business. So wholesalers, food production, food and beverage, you know, uh, distillers, brewers, coffee, uh, all sorts of food, uh, engineering, people manufacturing valves and things and selling them to other uh, people that supply the construction industry and so on. So we have a real focus on product based businesses, which is where, where you know, a, a key differentiator is. And hopefully you'll see that as we get into the system. So the syst our, our prospect CRM is built for your type of business. Um, what can it do for you? Well, we again, focus the functionality that we've built on that type of business being allowed to grow, not grow physically necessarily, but grow in terms of profit and orders uh, and so on. And so we have a growth formula that is fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, and for a product-based product business that's doing repeat uh, orders business to business, there, I guess, are two key things that are going to help you grow. The first one, which most CRMs do pretty well is to help you get more customers, new customers, to increase your customer base. Uh, and so we've got all sorts of functionality as you'd expect from a CRM system for marketing and then following that through uh, to sales to get more customers. But a critical bit that's missing in most other CRMs is some real detailed analysis to create a higher customer lifetime value. And so, what I need to do to create the higher customer lifetime value in a repeat star business, and quite often the, the higher customer lifetime value is way more valuable to my business than adding you know, a few customers each month. Um, and so we, we do a fair bit of focus on this uh, customer lifetime value, uh, and I'll run through that in a second. But uh, doing both of those things in a business like yours should help you achieve really profitable growth obviously the higher customer lifetime value is profitable because they're already existing customers that I'm dealing with. I'm just gonna get them to buy more and more often and stay with me for longer. So if we look at uh, fairly quickly, the, the funnel of doing business that I'm sure you've all seen uh, a million times where you, know, you put more in the top, so we attract more potential customers, uh, we get a quality lead, we try and sell to them, and then hopefully we close some of those deals and it's a sort of a funnel shape uh, and we get a first order, a new customer at the bottom. And that's a very traditional funnel of doing business. And the CRM will help you do each of those steps in a new business scenario. Um, for a wholesale or distributor type business that's looking for repeat business, that first order may not even be profitable actually. Um, you know, if I put a lot of work into getting them as a customer, and I mean, in our example uh, business that we're going to use today, we sell coffee beans and so on. Well, if I convinced a coffee shop to start trying my coffee and they bought a bag of beans, you know, at the end of that process, one bag of beans is not going to pay for all my sales effort. So actually, for most uh, businesses like yours, an additional critical step 
is the onboarding of a new customer. I don't want them to just buy one bag of beans. I want them to become a regular customer of mine that buys, you know, 20, 30, 50 bags of beans every week. And so that then is a step that's missing in a lot of CRMs where I'm going to feed them into my flywheel at the bottom of generating higher customer lifetime value. And we do that by looking at the order frequency. Can I get people to buy more frequently from me? Um, and it's not trying to get them necessarily to buy more um, in that section. It's more frequently. So, you know, if, if they run out of beans and have to fill in by buying some somewhere else while they put their stock order in with me, then, you know, if I'd called them the week before, I could have got that order and they'd be buying from me more frequently because it would have been a week earlier. The order value, are there tools that we can give you that will help you increase your average order values with customers? You know, when someone buys product A, should I have it linked to product B so that I'm offering them that at the same time because I know they go together well? Do they even know that as well as coffee beans, I sell coffee grinders? Do they even know that? Um, because they must buy coffee grinders from somewhere. So I need to make sure they're aware of all the things that I sell so that I can try and increase my average order value. And then if I retain them for longer, you know, so if my average customer stays with me for five years, if I can increase that to six years, that is going to achieve, again, a significant growth in my business. So all of our sort of uh, tools in the CRM are designed around these elements. And if you buy, um, a prospect CRM from us, you'll um, you'll go through a process with our onboarding team that looks at this growth playbook. And so this is focusing on all of those elements. So if you look on the bottom here, we've got the attract, the sell, the close, uh, then onboarding, and then our order value, order frequency and retention. And there are actionable things that you can do here in each of these streams um, to increase the effectiveness of each of these elements. Um, and I, I'm not going to go through all of those, but I would encourage you as one of the perhaps takeaways from today, if you go to the Prospect Soft website um, and go to that address at the bottom of the screen now, there is actually a benchmarking um, scoring system that you can run through for your business for each of these elements along the bottom here that will give you an idea, if you, if you give it genuinely honest answers as you go through it, it'll give you an idea of uh, the benchmarking, you know, how well you're doing compared to other businesses, each of these elements, um, and therefore where your best efforts could be put to help you grow your business quickly. So, um, as I say, I'm not gonna go through each of these. You'll, you'll see that mentioned in several of them though are the RFM, um, grids and statistics and so on. And so um, RFM is a, a, an industry term, actually, it's not our term, but it's a process that we've adopted and integrated all of the algorithms and AI into our CRM for you. So RFM stands for Recency, Frequency and Monetary Value. And it's a way of analyzing your customers. And so if you compare your customers' sales histories to each other, you can come out based on you know uh, comparing to each other. Who are your champion customers? Um, you know, they're the ones that bought most recently, buy often, and spend the most money. So they bought recently, frequently, and uh, of a high monetary value, uh, and so on. And and this this isn't our invention. RFM is a you know a a a standard business tool for wholesalers and distributors, uh, but we've built it into our, our CRM for you. So ultimately, at the end, I'm going to encourage you to take a free trial with us. And if you take a free trial uh, and integrate it to your Unleashed, you'll get all of this analysis on your customer base in that free trial. We do that analysis for you by integrating to Unleashed, bringing as much history as you've got in Unleashed into our system, and then applying the AI and the algorithms to segment your customers into these sections. So you'll immediately, even on, a, on a, one of our 14 day free trials, get some value out of the free trial to be able to see where your customers reside compared to each other in these RFM segments. And there's, 
an additional segment that we put in, which is the new customers, so that you can approach that onboarding that I mentioned to make sure that they're just uh, not just a one-off order. Uh, and in fact, the analysis we've done across the um, set of Unleashed customers tells us that the fourth order is a critical point. So uh, up till a customer places four orders with you, actually they are more likely not to place an order than they are to place one. After the fourth order, it flips to over 50% likely that they will place the fifth order. So we hold them in here until they've placed four orders with you so that you can get your account managers to nurture them and make sure that they do become a regular customer. And then when they leave here, they'll go into whichever relevant segment based on their purchases. Um, so there's some more information again on our website. Um, but as I say, it's not our invention, RFM. There's lots of information on the web about RFM and how you can approach it and what the actionable elements of it should be. But here's some examples here. And um, I will share or I will share these slides with you all at the end uh, and the recording, actually, so that you can pass it on to colleagues. So you don't need to frantically write down these URLs necessarily. Uh, so that's one of the tools I'm going to show you in a second. Um, and, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons that Helen was saying what she was uh, about the, uh, the first time that we showed her Prospect CRM. So I've mentioned a few times that we're integrated to Unleashed. Uh, what does that actually mean? Um, this is integration that's been built over the last five years and is incredibly mature and incredibly reliable. Um, so uh, it has lots of touch points. Um, so, for example, when you connect to your Unleashed system, and as I say, you can do this in a free trial, we'll bring in all of the currencies, the taxes, the warehouses, your customers, your suppliers, all of the products and the pricing and the stock levels uh, and all of your historic orders and invoices and credits. So we'll have a full kind of mirror of uh, what's been going on in your Unleashed system so that we can do all of that analysis um, from a sales and marketing perspective rather than an operations perspective, which is the reporting that you typically get out of Unleashed. Um, we do incidentally, I think it was one of the questions, but I might as well mention it now, we do uh, sync the customer records. So uh, you can turn on a sync so that if a change happens in one system, it will be reflected in the other and it's a two-way sync. But then from the CRM side, I can generate a quotation using the pricing and the products that we've got from Unleashed. Um, and then I can push that back into Unleashed as an order when the quotation is accepted. You could create new products in the CRM for quoting purposes and only push them through as new products once an order is placed. Some people do that, some people don't. Um, and obviously you can create new customers. So I can quote using my Unleashed price list to a customer that doesn't yet exist, a potential customer, so they don't yet exist in Unleashed. Uh, and when they place their first order, I can then create a new account for them in Unleashed and push the order over to that new account. So the, the integration is incredibly um, tight. Um, and I, uh, you'll see once we get into the system that you, you almost don't notice, you know, uh, which system uh, the data is coming from or to or where it's, uh, where it's owned. It's quite a seamless integration. So without further ado, let me get uh, over into our demonstration. Um, and so I'm going to start, as I say, this is a company, a fictitious company called Coffee and Bean, who sell uh, coffee equipment and coffee beans and ground coffee to various coffee shops and uh, retailers and what have you around Australia. And so we've landed in the system um, on, I've opened the account manager dashboard and I could filter this down by a particular account manager uh, if I wanted to, you know, if I was working on my own customers or at the moment I'm looking at everybody. And so if I just quickly run around these, we I mentioned RFM and front and center, you get that RFM analysis. So. Uh, as I say, even on a trial, this would happen for you. So I can see I've got five champions, eight loyal customers. And if I click on one of these uh, sections, it'll show me who those customers are. Uh, and in fact, I could delve into one of these customers. So Bean Supreme Australia, and I've got various information about them. I've, I'm getting information through from Unleashed already about orders that have been placed. 
um, what they've spent so far. I've got a link to Google Maps and directions, uh, various information about them as a customer, um, and quite a lot of additional pages of information here, including a page that shows me the Unleashed account that I'm connected to that we will sync with. And you know, at any of these points, I can open that in my Unleashed and it'll take me to the customer in Unleashed. Um, we also bring in a full sales transaction history. So this shows me there's actually an order for a couple of items that haven't been delivered or invoiced yet, um, but we've got 72 pages of historic order items that this customer has ordered. Um, and I can see various information, the order number, the invoice number, um, and again, I could open any of these orders in Unleashed if I wanted to. Um, so there were two items on that particular order that we can see there. Uh, and indeed, we've got the two items here on that order. So it's a big, long list of everything they've ever bought. And, you know, I can do some searching. I could search for a particular SKU or, you know, for something that uh, uh, a keyword in the description or anything, really, to, to get a picture of what. And, and we'll, I'll show you how that's used. Uh, later on, perhaps. But then what we do is we analyze this from a sales and marketing perspective. So as their account manager, I can see what is their pattern by invoice and order. Now, we can see they're a pretty regular and solid customer that must be buying very similar things on a regular basis, in fact, almost every week, uh, which is nice. Um, then what do they buy? I can see the top products they buy by value. So 52% of their spend if I do a see more, was actually on a ready to go golf cart. Um, in fact, they bought 15 of them on two separate orders uh, that cost them a quarter of a million dollars. Um, and so I've got some information on what they've been buying, when and so on. Um, we are linked, as I mentioned, we bring in all the products from Unleashed. So if I go to one of these products that they bought, this grinder perhaps, this is an unleashed record. So I can't edit any of these things. The, the master record is unleashed. And if it changes in unleashed, it will change here. I bring through any images uh, that we've got. I could open that record in unleashed, um, but we see the list price, the cost price. We show the quantity available. And if I skip over to unleashed quickly, you can see that there's 118 available indeed for that product. Um, I also then show some additional information. So, uh, although I know there's 118, we can show which warehouse those are residing in uh, if you run multiple warehouses. I can see any purchases that we've been making for these things. And I can see what transactions have gone on for this product in my system. So this is looking at the product now and everybody who's bought it and when they bought it and what they paid. And then we do some analysis on that that says, who's the top buyer for this product then? And although Bean Supreme Australia did spend a fair bit, the Coffee Guys New Zealand have spent a lot more on this. So they're a much uh, bigger buyer. And then I get to see some uh, seasonality on this product. So is there a particular time of year when I should be stocking up on it or that we seem to sell a lot of it? Or is there a time of the year that it's quiet and that I should do a promotion on it, et cetera? All kind of sales and marketing analysis that you might use. The upsell I'll mention, you, is, it's here that you can link products together. So uh, if there was something you know, that went with this grinder, um, so I don't know, a power supply or perhaps uh, you know, a mounting plinth, I can link the product together using my upsell. And so when I sell one of these, actually I'll get a little prompt pop up on the screen saying, you should offer the plinth that goes with this to this customer. Um, and you can do either uh, a, an upsell, which would be, there's this coffee grinder, but you could buy a better one that's more expensive. You can do a cross sell, which would be you're buying this and you can have a plinth to go with it. Um, or you can do a must sell, which is if you buy that, unless you get the power supply, it won't work. And all of those will play into our sort of quoting and ordering that I'm gonna show you in a second. So that's the kind of information that we're showing from Unleashed and how we analyze it that should help you from a sales and marketing perspective to get a real grip of what customers are doing and how I can improve that frequency, uh, average order value, uh, and hopefully keep them for longer. I'll just show you this briefly at the bottom here, the magic matrix. I'm gonna do a little bit more on this later on, but it's, a, it's another business tool specifically 
um, for your type of business where it's a Harvard Business School idea, actually, again, and you, you, you can Google Magic Matrix, but it essentially is a grid that I'll show you later that tries to make sure that my customers are buying as many of the products that I sell. So at the moment, uh, Bean Supreme Australia are unaware that we sell display equipment. Uh, actually, they're a particularly good customer because from all my other categories of products, they buy, they have bought everything. So their their you know their spend is pretty well spread across my whole uh, product uh, groups. So that's the kind of thing that we're doing with the RFM, and then on a particular customer, the kind of depth of information that we uh, look at from Unleashed and analyze in, in uh, the kind of way that you might want to analyze for a sales and marketing department. We then give you some other actionable tools. So this is the Prospect AI Growth Engine, and this is looking at every customer permanently and analyzing what is their order pattern. So how frequently do they order? Um, and what is the values of the orders that are coming through? And it builds a pattern using AI and starts to predict when they should place their next order based on the orders that they have placed. And so people, customers will start popping up on here. So the boat shed, based on their ordering, previous ordering, should have placed an order for $2,780 on the 5th of April, but they haven't. So as an account manager, I can ring these people immediately and try and find out what has happened. Why have they broken their normal ordering pattern? You know, has the, has the buyer there changed? Did they have a problem with the last order? Has something else gone wrong? You know, what, what, what is the order? Has somebody just forgotten to place the order? And so this is where we can increase that order frequency by getting on top of when people should be placing orders based on the history of what they have placed previously. And so this will change every day, you know, as other people fall into the uh, missing orders. Um, we then show a customer trend. So who are my growing customers year on year? And this is a rolling year on year. So it's permanently the last 365 days versus the previous 365 days literally rolling as you go through uh, every day. And so I've got some growing customers. These are spending a lot more than they did before year on year, which is great. Uh, I might We haven't got any static customers, but I've got some declining customers. So these people, and in fact, Beans, although they're a loyal customer, are declining slowly. So I need to get on top of that and find out why they're buying less than they used to year on year. Um, then we have some needs engagement. So this tells me customers uh, that have not had a meaningful engagement. And in the setup, you can decide what is a meaningful engagement, which type of conversation uh, does sending an email constitute a meaningful engagement? You know, I could be argued either way. Placing an order probably does. Some, you know, a face to face meeting does. Probably a phone call with the right people does. And so this really is an account manager that tells you that you need to get on top of these customers. Um, because, you know, you haven't spoken to these people for a month. The problems I'm not going to get into too much today, but it is a uh, service ticketing system that we have within the CRM. So if somebody receives some goods and they're damaged uh, or you need to do a return, you, you can manage a return system through this service ticketing um, with a pipeline and a workflow, you know, to say, have they returned the product? You can issue an RMA number on those sort of things or just simple customer complaints or any other problems that you want to uh, log and track through the system. Um, then we've got a close rate on deals that are going on for uh, a particular account manager or customers. Um, looking back at the orders that have gone on in the business, um, that's for everybody, but again, you can filter this by account manager if necessary. And then a month on month picture. So last month, we're actually 142% up. So we're having a particularly good month this month, which is nice. Um, so that's the dashboard. What I want to do quickly now is just show you a bit of actual real action. And so I'm going to search for Michelle, who I know works at Browns. So you can combine, this is a search everything, and you can combine any part of the major records. So Michelle at Browns or, you know, jury at Ipswich or whatever. Um, and if I go to Michelle's record, uh, she's a contact in our system, and I can see that she works for Brown's Coffee of Ipswich. Um, 
And so um, Michelle, uh, you know, has her own record here with her own email address. Uh, she's a main decision maker for the business. Uh, and her actual job title is that she's a director. So I can use this kind of analysis for marketing lists and uh, uh, campaigns. Um, and then I've got various information on her, any quotes or orders we've previously um, sent to her, and then a history of everything that's gone on with Michelle in her notepad with the latest thing at the top. And there's lots of things you can do with these notepads, like tagging colleagues, you can set follow-ups and so on and so forth. So I'm going to do the simplest thing. They're an existing customer. I'm going to say that Michelle has called in and she wants a quote uh, and hopefully is going to place an order. So on her record, I'm going to go to plus and I'm going to create a new quotation. I could just put an order through if she wanted to place an order immediately. If it was a potential new customer and I wasn't doing a quote yet, but there is an opportunity here for them to become a customer, I can log the fact that we've got an opportunity for this customer and then manage it almost like a mini sales project, again, with a workflow of steps that we go through in that opportunity until we perhaps do do a quota order against the opportunity. But in this case, because she's an existing customer, I'm just going to fire up a quote. Uh, it's for a new stock order that she wants a quote on. Um, she's in general customer's price tier, but this is where I could set that if she wasn't yet a customer. And so let's create the quote and get straight into, it's offering me here things that she's bought before. Um, so we'll perhaps put one of these, yeah, let's say she wants some, some of those double wall uh, coffee plungers. So I'll add that. Um, and yeah, perhaps we'll put some other Breville stuff on. So if I search for uh, Breville, it'll come, start coming up with all those things. So we'll put that grinder on uh, and let's say she wants two of those etc etc and so i can build this quote up um if i wanted to do a slightly cleverer search if i click the search here it opens a complete search screen for me um, and i can do a multi-line ad so i could say three of those four of those and two of those um, also here i could search things that she has recently purchased so if she said i can't remember what we normally have can you tell me these are things that she's bought uh, fairly recently, not that I was doing a practice or anything, um, a little while ago. And then if she says, look, I'm a shop, tell me what's selling well. I can go to what's popular. Um, and so, you know, I can say, well, these are the things that we're selling the most of at the moment. You might want to stock these. So we're always trying to put in front of the salesperson or account manager the best information that's going to help increase the average order value. Um, other things we could do is if she was, you know, a potential new customer that said, look, I might want to buy some of your equipment and I might want to buy some of your beans. Can you separate it out on the quote for me? I have an option to segregate a quote into groups. And so I could put uh, a group here with all the coffee beans and then a group here with all of the uh, machinery, perhaps. So quite a lot of flexibility. So uh, let's send Michelle this quote, um, and I could either email it to her, but uh, and it'll attach a PDF document to the email. Um, so, I mean, I'll just quickly show you that. So if we did a simple PDF quote, so it'll attach a PDF, um, and I'll show you this sort of authorization process. Um, but I actually want to generate the document so that I can show you it. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to create a document uh, as a Word document, and we'll do a quote, um, just so that you can see the document here in front of us. That's it. So let's open that up. And the flexibility, uh, because our templates are Microsoft Word, you can choose your styles, your tables. Uh, you can decide what goes into the tables, the width of the columns. I mean, there's an incredible amount of flexibility on what your quotes will look like. Um, and you can then manually edit. If I wanted to put a specific note on this one for Michelle, then I could. Um, but the quote is there. And uh, one, of our, one of the things that we have uh, for you in our system is a quote to order workflow. So either on an email or on a document like this, um, which was th this gets turned into a PDF and attached to that email, you get these approval decline buttons for the customer. So if Michelle wanted to, if she clicked the approve button, uh, uh, sorry, let me skip that. 
Um, she can put her order number in here and approve it, and it will process that order for you. Um, so, you know, again, trying to really uh, push through more order frequency by getting people to place orders, um, you know, as we go, rather than me having to chase up tomorrow to see if she received the quote, liked it and so on. If she just wants to go ahead, she can. Uh, obviously, we do have, you know, expiry dates and to do's and follow ups and things that you can set. But let's assume that she wanted to go. She received the quote and she wanted to go ahead with it uh, and she's phoned me. So I'm going to process it. Uh, I can obviously put her order number in here. Uh, I can choose how this turns up in Unleashed. So parked, back ordered or placed. I'm going to put it through as a parked order for now. And then we might want to do some things uh, in Unleashed with it. Uh, and so basically, then I'm going to confirm this order. Uh, and so it literally goes through as we're waiting here and writes the order into Unleashed. It's waiting to be confirmed and then the order is created. Uh, and not that you would typically as a salesperson, but if I wanted to, I could go and open that in, un in Unleashed. And there is the order exactly as we created it on the right account with the right products at the right prices for Michelle. So you can see this integration is pretty seamless. Um, so I will just then quickly, before we get on to uh, questions, um, show you uh, a little bit about the um, service ticketing, because uh, people are quite often interested in that. So I I'll just show you that uh, what you might want to do uh, is if Michelle then said, look, you know, that coffee grinder turned up and it doesn't work, I can log a service ticket or problem. Um, so we'll say faulty coffee grinder. And uh, it came in by telephone. Uh, this is a uh, product issue. Um, yeah, and so we're going to do a product return. And so we're starting with it at the status of logged, but this is our workflow where it'll be logged, we'll issue the return number, we'll await the return. Once it's received, we'll then say it's either accepted for credit, it was rejected, closed it because we never got the return, uh, or just canceled it because she decided not to bother. Um, so if I create that, we get a unique reference number, it happens to be 1000 in this case, uh, which will be her return number. Um, and I can set a follow up if I want to, um, so that somebody chases her, you know, in a couple of days to see if she sent the return and has got the re return number. Um, if I was visiting Michelle, incidentally, and I should mention that everything you're looking at here um, works on any device. It's a fully responsive web app, uh, which is the way things are going, really, rather than having to install an app. So. The, the sort of browser part will disappear. You can pin it as an app on your phone or tablet and it automatically uh, sizes and adjusts the screen to uh, an app for you once you're on a smaller device. Um, and then things like, you know, if I wanted to, from my phone, for example, if I said I wanted to add something, if I say upload a photo because I'm going to take a picture of, you know, whatever went wrong, it'll open the camera, take the picture and store it as a document against this record. So um, yeah, all of this stuff works on um, you know, any device. Um, so that's a, a very quick glimpse at the um, service ticketing system. The, the final thing I'll show you um, that I mentioned was the magic matrix. Uh, and this is another fantastic tool to help you grow your business. So. If I go to the dashboard, first of all, th this actually, uh, if you take a free trial, will come in as your, it's actually your first 30 unleashed product categories. Um, you can adjust these if you want to, because sometimes the categories you set up in, in, in unleashed are for stock purposes and accounting purposes rather than perhaps sales and marketing purposes. So if, actually the categories you've got don't make sense for this functionality. You can reconfigure the categories and on bulk move things into different categories, products into different categories, specifically for the magic matrix. But this is showing me that for machines, um, I've got 16 customers that are un, uh, unaware. Um, 
we haven't done any promotion yet to make any aware. I've got one that I'm working on, an opportunity that hasn't bought yet, and 22 that buy, and so on. So here we've done a, we've obviously run a campaign on ingredients where we've made four customers aware that haven't bought yet and 20 have bought. And so I can see here, this is showing me basically the you know, penetration to my customer base of each of these product categories. So I definitely need to do some work on display equipment because nobody has bought it. Um, and so I, I, I can do various things uh, at this point and look at uh, you know, what's going on with each of these. But if I open the actual magic matrix, and this is the Harvard Business School idea of a list of customers and a list of products, or in our case, categories, because products would be much too big a grid, and then it shows me for each customer what stage they're at. So Bro Roast have, are completely unaware that we sell coffee carts. However, we do have an opportunity that we've been working on that I can see over here for a possible new supply of display equipment. So we're trying to sell them that. They do buy um, the uh, home coffee equipment and I can see the sales there of home coffee equipment for that customer by clicking and uh, they're aware of ingredients because we put them into our ingredients promotion um, less than a year ago so we're saying they are aware that we sell ingredients we haven't got an opportunity or a quote for them and they haven't bought them so that gives me quite a good view of what's going on with my products across my customer base but it also again we try to give you some actionable stuff so Let's say uh, we want to build awareness for display equipment. So let's take out the other things. And we're going to say that specifically, we're going to try and build awareness for our display equipment because nobody's buying it. I could do that for specific account managers. Perhaps I want to target my champions, loyal customers, potential loyalists, uh, and promising. You could obviously target any groups you like. And I could choose specific industries if I've set them up. So is it retail shops or coffee houses or so on? Um, and I'm going to target anyone who's unaware. Uh, we haven't, I don't think, got anyone that's aware, but I'm going to make them re-aware, if you like. Um, and so here now, I can create a specific campaign activity that will add in all of those people that met that criteria. And with our integration to uh, MailChimp, for example, or Clavio, you can then run a specific campaign to those people about that specific product group, knowing that they're people that have never bought it and, in fact, are probably unaware. So I can do a very specific message to a very targeted audience, which is exactly what every Marketing 101 book tells you you should be doing for the most successful marketing. So you know that's the kind of thing that we allow you to do and, and how we can help with this growing the existing customers. So I think that's probably enough demonstration. Um, if I just uh, quickly flip back now before we get into questions um, and, and talk to you a little bit about next steps. Uh, we, I have set aside some time for questions, so don't worry. Um, if that has piqued your interest, and hopefully it has, because you know, we've designed our system exactly for customers like you, um, then I think the next step really that I'd encourage you it is to take a free trial. It's free. <laughs> uh, why wouldn't you? You know, and you can integrate your free trial so that you can see all of that stuff that I've just been showing you for your existing customer base. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that easily. You can either just go straight to our website and there's take a free trial button there. Actually, uh, even more easy or more easily um, is within your Unleashed system. If um, I, don't, I think you need to be um, a, a certain level of user, but if you go to the integration store and pick prospect uh, CRM, then there's actually a take a free trial button here, which will build the free trial and automatically integrate it for you uh, to your Unleash system because you're taking it from your Unleash system. Uh, so we really couldn't have made it simpler and easier. And as I say, you know, this, this integration is incredibly seamless and robust. Uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy using it. So I'd encourage you definitely to take a free trial. Uh, as I say, you know, why wouldn't you? It's free uh, and you get all of that intelligence uh, at least for the 14 days. Um, so thank you for your time. I appreciate that. Hopefully you found it useful. 
Um, I guess we can move over just to some Q and A now. Um, I know there were some pre-registration questions, and I see there's something popped into the chat as well. Yes, exactly. I don't know if you want to pop your camera back on. Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. Great. So, um, yeah, actually, a couple now coming in. So, um, one of the questions was, where does the price data come from in the quoting module? So, if I set up Unleashed to automatically change the price for ten dollars to nine dollars if the quantity exceeded fifty products would prospect pick that up yes absolutely so yeah we respect the pricing that's been set up in unleashed whether that's a quantity break or a specific price list um yeah I, I, it, essentially when we put a product on a quote with a quantity it's the unleashed tables that we're using in it to calculate the price for that customer for that quantity for that product uh, on this date <laughs> Um, yeah, so so absolutely, you, you you will get exactly the same price as if you had put a quota or an order in Unleashed. Yeah, thank you. Um, if we're currently using Salesforce, can you transfer all of our data into Prospect CRM? Um, so, uh, I mean, I guess the simple answer is yes. There's, there's we have a lot of um, input. It's not uh, firstly, it's not an uncommon question. You know, lots of people are moving from a another CRM system when they take our CRM system. So it's quite common for our onboarding. In fact, we have some standard service catalog items for doing exactly these kind of jobs. Now, uh, there'll be some templates that we'll ask you to populate with the data, but there is precious little data that we can't bring in. Even notepad entries we can import in. Um, obviously, additional marketing records if they don't yet exist in uh, Unleashed. And um, any other fields. So I, the, there's the ability in Prospect CRM to set up custom fields and then import to them if you've got specific data that's peculiar to your industry. Uh, so the short answer is yes. Um, it's something we do very regularly. I mean, I'm not going to say that, you know, absolutely every uh, ounce of information that you've got in, in Salesforce would come in, but I think, you know, the majority and certainly the critical stuff it is a kind of a bread and butter thing for us that we're doing for lots of new customers. Thank you. Um, somebody's asked, is this better than capsule CRM in terms of UX <laughs> slash UI? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you're asking the right person because uh, obviously I can <laughs> confidently tell you that yes, absolutely, it's better than capsule CRM. But uh, in terms of the UI and UX, I mean, you, you've just seen a demonstration. So hopefully that gives you a, uh, a feel for you know we've obviously tried to build it to be a, a beautiful looking system and an intuitive system to use uh you know I, I think for most people in our system hopefully it's fairly obvious where you're going next um you know we try to highlight the buttons that you might use on a record and so on and so forth so i i think probably uh, that was a pre uh webinar question was it so it was one of the pre hopefully yeah, Hopefully, I've been able to answer uh, Hansel for you uh, by, yeah. by showing yeah. you the system. Um, so another pre-registration one was looking for a simple CRM. They're all overly complicated and expensive. Looking forward to seeing it. Um, already in a niche customer, so hoping there's possibly a discount included. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, I, I mean, there is no standard discount for unleashed customers. But, you know, having said that, if... Um, uh, you know, if you're looking for a system with enough users and so on, uh, there, there's always the possibility of some negotiation. Um, you know, um, the sort of thing that we can do is if if people are prepared to fix a, a, a decent number of users for their, we run on a 12 month contract with our system. So if, if, if you're prepared to fix for a decent number of users for that 12 months, then we can probably do a proportion of the contract at half price or something like that. Um, Kirsten has asked advantages and limitations of Prospect CRM when integrating Unleashed with Shopify. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so uh, Shopify or um, WooCommerce or any of the any of the web stores, really. Um, uh, you're right, um, Kirsten, was it, did you say? Kirsten, um, yeah. Yeah, so Kirsten, you're right that the integration from a web store 
typically would be straight into Unleashed because you're taking web orders and pushing them through Unleashed. Um, the what happens in, in in that case? I mean, there's a few things, uh, and we've got several settings that cover it. Firstly, if it's um, just business customers that happen to place some of their orders online, absolutely fine. Those orders will appear in your transaction history against the customer. And so you'll still have a full picture of everything that's gone on in the CRM system. It's just that some of the orders would have ended up coming through uh, Shopify or, or a web store. Um, if it's a brand new customer that kind of sets up an account online and places their first order, then as they appear in Unleashed, we will pick up the fact that there's a new customer and create a new CRM record for you and link it up with their transaction history. So again, you'll get the full picture still. The only circumstances in which you might not want that is if um, you're using the CRM predominantly for your business to business sales, which is obviously where it's focused, but you have a Shopify store that's kind of a retail store for end users, quite often one-off purchases. You can choose, and we have some identifying um, uh, methods, you can choose in our settings not to bring in what we would call B2C customers, business to consumer. So if there's no great advantage in having a whole list of Mrs. Smith of Acacia Avenue uh, in your system with a one sale that she bought, um, you know, and I'm not going to get an account manager to try and ring her because she just bought something on Shopify, then you can choose to exclude those from the CRM system so that they're not sort of confusing the picture. Although in your totals of, you know, turnover and orders and so on, we'll still be seeing the orders. So there's quite a few settings. Again, it's quite a common thing. And we have several ways of dealing with it that I think, are, uh, you know, are quite appropriate. In the kind of theme here, so Daniel's asked a bit of newbie regarding CRM. Does Prospect CRM integrate with an e-commerce site? Question being, if a potential customer picks a few products, they abandon the shopping cart. Does CRM, does the CRM trigger a follow-up reminder to the to the client? So uh, the the abandoned cart um, functionality is typically in your system, like Shopify or WooCommerce or whatever. Uh, and so we tend not to get involved with that, to be perfectly honest, because th they have their own functionality to give you a list of abandoned carts uh, and so on. Um, the, the, and again, actually, most people don't integrate their web store directly to the CRM. It would be to Unleashed so that the orders process through. And then we pick it up, uh, as I just mentioned, so that you've got a picture of who's bought what. And you might then do your account management you know, um, uh, from the CRM, but seeing everything they bought online. Emily's asked, can you email multiple people in one store, e.g. the business owner and the marketing manager, or does it only go to one key email from each business? Um, well, I, you can email anybody, yes. I mean, um, so e even with a quote, I can add other people onto the email, you know, for a single document, it'll give you a, just a drop down if you go to put in an additional email address uh, of all the other people that work at that business. So it's quite quick and easy to, to send it to multiple people. Um, the, for for uh, sort of email shotting or mass emailing, uh, I mentioned briefly that we integrate to MailChimp and to Clavio. So you can then, in our campaign manager, there's, again, there's quite a few tools that say, for example, when I did that magic matrix, I put everybody in who's unaware um, of the fact that we sell display equipment. That will put their company records into the system, uh, into the um, campaign. I then choose on the campaign, how many people do I want to send this to at each business? So I could say, I want to send it to three people at each business that meets my criteria. And when you say, I want to send it to three people, our system will say, okay, these are the roles you've got. Rank um, which is the most important to get it down to the least important. And we'll pick the top three that we can for each of the businesses. So that, um, yeah, there's, again, you know, a fair bit of flexibility and thought has gone into the way that you might market to people. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can send uh, to more than one person in, in several ways. 
Great, thank you. Um, anonymous, so following the 14 day free trial, what happens to our data that has been created in prospect? Well, hopefully uh, <laughs> you'll uh, sign up and it'll become a live system that you use for many years to come. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if for whatever reason you decided you didn't want to proceed, then um, after 30 days, it is permanently deleted from, uh, from all of our systems. Paddy's asked, is all information bi-directional between the two systems? For example, an order placed through prospect, pushed to unleash, then the changes are made in unleashed, the changes move back into prospect. They do, yes, into that transaction history. So yeah, if I put a, an order through for five of something, uh, and then uh, the customer, you know, for whatever, he, or perhaps we found that we only had four in stock because one was broken that we thought we had in stock, and we changed the order to four, when we're bringing the transaction history back through, it's a constant updating of the transaction history. So it show me that we only shipped uh, four of them. Um, so yeah, that, that it does keep it uh, to be correct as per what ultimately happened in Unleashed. Yeah, and that's similar, that's a similar question actually. Another anonymous, anonymous person has asked if we input data into Prospect, will that data be synced to Unleashed? We have another integration that only works one way from unleash to the third party, but not third party. So that, that's pretty much yeah. I mean, hopefully I've shown you some of that. And yeah, I mean, it is definitely a two way integration. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we've only been with Unleash 10 months, so the data uh, to work with will be limited. But we have a three year history and zero. Can that be pulled across to prospect? Yes. Again, that's quite a common uh, scenario. Um, and we have some specific processes for doing that. Um, there is a little bit of uh, work involved, and so it's a service catalogue item of labour to do it, but it's a very common scenario. Um, and there's just a few questions that our uh, onboarding team, um, who are based incidentally uh, locally, we have both onboarders in Australia, uh, and local support uh, and also local sales uh, resource as well for you uh, in Australia. Um, but yes, the, uh, uh, there's just some questions around making sure that the, cust that, that the customer codes haven't changed and the product codes haven't changed, or if they have, then we just need a grid of what it used to be and what it is so that we can match it all up and don't end up with any duplicates. But yeah, it's a very common scenario that people started with zero using their product file and then progressed on to Unleashed and have a lot more history perhaps in Zero than they do in Unleashed. And yeah, we, we effectively bring it all in um, and match it all up to the right customers so that you get a full history um, as back as far as it goes. That ties in a bit to um, a couple of questions around onboarding services we offer. Um, and the, the minimum number of users if, if you know you sure. subscribe after your free trial yeah i mean uh it's probably easiest if i go um let's go to uh let's put this out of the way if i go to our website um and you can see there's a pricing page. And if we choose uh, Australian dollars. So this is the system that we've been looking at, um, which is our professional system that has all of those RFM and Magic Matrix tools, etc. cetera, in. Um, and so it's $96 per user per month. Um, and it's a four user minimum. Thank you. Um, and onboarding, the answer is yes, we have services for that. Yes, yeah. I mean, in fact, if I um, go to a subscribe now, you can see that I can pick my plan and then you've got various flight paths um, in terms of the onboarding from $438 up to $5,000, depending on what you need. Um, and uh, I guess we can put the link in to more information. Yeah. Uh, on those flight paths and exactly what's included in them later on. Uh, sure. I see somebody just asked quickly about import and export. I mean, a data import uh, is to either create or update existing records for the main records in your database. But 
there are also all sorts of things that you can do at various points. So they mentioned something about SKUs. If I go to yeah. a list of products, then I do have an update via Excel, which means I can take the list out to Excel, edit some fields you know, that are editable and aren't going to be overwritten again from Unleashed. So if I've got some extra fields in the CRM, for example, like my magic matrix categories, uh, I could update via Excel or I can perform a bulk action, um, which allows me to choose certain records or apply a filter and then choose all of the records uh, and then do a bulk action of updating them in a particular way or a field against them. So the, the, there's actually multiple ways to bring in data, update data and bulk change data. Um, I think that was Ben Ramsey was asking that. Oh, no, sorry. Ben was asking about cold lead prospects. Yep. I don't the next know. one, I'm, yeah. I'm, so I'm a little bit over time. Um, yeah. Um, maybe we'll contact you separately, back, Ben, and, and, and show, make sure that we show you that. Yeah, and um, Ian was just saying about the process to group emailing um, existing customers or prospects. We mentioned Mailchimp integration yes. is included. Yeah, yeah, the integration um, of Mailchimp is included. Obviously, you need a Mailchimp yeah. account, but um, yes, I mean essentially um, in the system here, you can connect to your Mailchimp account once you've got it set up, um, and then you can uh, choose various settings for it and as you add people to a campaign one of the options is to push them through to mailchimp with a particular tag so that you can put them into you know a specific e-shop from mailchimp and then we bring back in all of the uh, we'd mark the customer if they unsubscribed we'd show you if they've clicked on a link a track link in that email um uh, and when they opened it, so when it was sent, when it was opened, if they clicked on a link or if they unsubscribed, gets shown back in the CRM um, for you to, to to action as salespeople. Yeah, and then we've had a few questions about the integration and how, when I set up my free trial, how do I integrate? So obviously you showed the option of going straight from the Unleashed yes. store, but I will send out in the follow-up email just the, the the help guide on how to just set up the, the integration for the trial sure. as well for those that want that. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't really show you live because this is already connected, but essentially yeah. if you go to the integration store and then choose prospect, what you will get is a button here that rather than says request permission because I've got an existing account that allows you to uh, set up the trial and connect it to your Unleashed from here and it'll do all the work for you. But yeah, as Jess says, she'll send out some more information on that. Okay, I think okay. we'll wrap up. I've got a few other specific questions that I'll get to you guys separately. But yeah, thank you, Stuart. That was really useful. Okay, no, well, and, thank uh, you. Yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Yes, I hope so. Thank you for attending. And um, we look forward to helping you with your free trials. Thank Thanks you very much, much everyone. everybody. Take care.